Hey guys, this is Jason Bontrager, uh, CEO and founder of Skinny Guy Campers. We're here at uh, Overland Expo Mountain West, and uh, we're gonna just do a quick walk around of the Skinny Guy Camper uh, model 6.5. This is a, the first model that we've developed. It's offered in uh, four different color options. You can get it raw, so raw aluminum. You can get it in uh, black, as you see here. Uh, we also have a gray one right over here, and then we also have a gunmetal exterior color. The interior color is always going to be a light gray. We just felt like that was the best color for uh, just a good all-around color that every most people would like. On the outside, the structure of the product is uh, all aluminum skin. It's one eighth inch aluminum skin. All of our fasteners are rivets. We have uh, mostly stainless steel and aluminum that we use. We really tried to avoid carbon steel and um, other rivets that are not closed end rivets. So the closed end rivets are nice because they do not let water infiltrate into the camper itself. So it's really a very water resistant exterior. The camper is unique in multiple ways. It looks like a rooftop tent. Well, it's not just a rooftop tent. It's a rooftop tent combined with a very small RV, more or less. The floor is at the height of your, your bed side rails and you have six and a half feet of of height inside. So if you climb up in, you get six and a half feet worth of height. The roof of the camper sits right at the height of the cab. So one of our major design challenges was to figure out how to fit everything into our camper that a normal RV would have um, inside of, a, of an envelope that's that, that, that short. So we've done it and here it is. So the way this works, the roof folds open and as you fold open the roof, the tent goes up at the same time. And it's a very easy process. It takes about five minutes. We have stainless steel bows inside that support everything. And we have a, a stainless steel pulley system and cable system, which allows essentially pulls, each bow pulls itself up um, with, when the roof is pulled open. So that's just a quick overview of the structure, how it works. Another major feature on the outside of our camper is uh, when it comes to the bed of your truck, we love to have bed storage when we have our camper, our camper on. So we designed the underbelly of the camper to only take up a little bit of the in, in bed storage area. So it still allows you to do, to have a truck vault or a, or a decked system in the bed of your truck, even though you have the camper sitting above. One other nice feature of the camper is of a skinny guy camper is the uh, the underbelly drops down. So if you if you have a need to work on the underbelly, you can drop that down and uh, work on plumbing or inspect the tanks or or what have you. So uh, the bed is supported by it's helped helped to be lifted by these gas struts, heavy duty gas struts, and then it's it's supported by uh, these uh, stainless steel support rods. And uh, this, this feature here is actually a conceptual uh, outside shower that we're working on. It's not refined and we're not offering it yet, but at some point we will likely offer an outside shower and uh, allow you to retrofit your Skinny Guy camper that are built now for future, future options like that. Um, another great feature we have is this uh, solar panel. This is a, a 190 watt solar panel. It folds out. It doesn't slide in and out, it folds out. The support bars here uh, slide in and out to support this when it's hinged out. The reason we do a hinge versus a slide out system is that when you're going down the road, the solar panel is facing up and you want to obviously have it facing up so you can charge your batteries. But if you uh, fold the bed open, your solar panel is facing down. So then once you're at the campsite, you can open this up and then you can have your, your solar uh, power while you're at camp. Let's just walk around here to the back side. This is another conceptual item that we're working on. It's a roof rack system. We actually do have on the roof now, we have a roof rack system built in, which you can mount bike racks to and other, other items to. This is a, a new design that we've come up with. It mounts to the sidewall. And the nice thing about mounting it to the sidewall is that we don't have to replace gas struts with heavier duty gas struts if you add more gear to the to the roof so with this being mounted to the sidewall there's no added weight to the top of the camper this one folds over the top of the roof right now donovan has designed this system to accept allow him to carry his fly craft raft and so he does a lot of fly fishing as you can see he's got his uh, fly rod storage compartment from riversmith 
And, and this is uh, something that, again, that will be retrofi retrofitable on uh, any Skinny Guy camper going, going forward. The, one of the great things about our, our structural aircraft grade aluminum is uh, it allows us to fasten a multitude of other items to the uh, outside of the camper. So we purposely went with a, a thicker material, not only because it's strong, but also it just enables us to adapt our product to a lot of different scenarios. So shall we go inside and check out the inside of the camper? Well, we're inside the Skinny Guy Camper Model 6.5 now. So you've got a, a cooktop here, single burner cooktop. You got a sink, you got running water, you've got a water heater, uh, which also that same unit pushes out hot air into the into the coach. So if you're doing cold weather camping, you can you can you can have hot hot uh, or heat while you're camping as well. The only thing that this doesn't have that is in a typical RV or a full full blown camper is um, an air conditioner. We don't have an air conditioner, but we do have windows with a no CM screen, so it keeps out the no CM bugs, which is excellent. You also get a uh, a Dometic cooler here. We call that a refrigerator. Some people call it a cooler. You can call it whatever you want. It keeps things cool. We have a, a Red Arc Manager 30 in here, which helps with uh, uh, bringing in the solar panel, the energy created by the solar panel and charges our batteries. We've got a Xantrax Freedom X inverter on board. And then we've got multiple switches down here, um, which uh, power the lights. And our lights are all uh, touch lights. so. This one is a touch on and off on, on the bow. There's a little bit of exposed wiring, just but we run that down all the way down to the uh, our electrical system. All the lights in the base are touch lights as well. So those are easy to use. You can kind of customize which ones you want on and which ones you want off. Then we have a switch for the water pump to run your water. And then we have a blank switch. So it's there in case you want to hook up something else something else in there so our bed is for the size and weight of this camper it's fairly comfortable it's roughly six six feet long uh, has a folding flap here and we've got a rubberized uh, bottom layer on here to help protect knees as you're crawling in and out of the bed the bed section itself is actually what rated to 600 pounds so there's a fair amount of weight capacity out there and again as, as i was pointing out earlier this is our stainless steel pulley system. So when you, when you go to raise the bed, raise the roof, raise the bed system, um, these sliders slide up from below by way of being pulled by uh, our cable system. So as you, raise, as you raise the roof, the bows fold out, this, this, pulley come, this slider comes up, and then once it's fully to the right height, um, you push it just a little bit farther to tension it, and that's what puts the final tension on your uh, tent. So a lot of capability with this product, depending on your use of propane, which I didn't point that out on the outside, but we do have a 20-pound 20, 20 propane tank in our, in our uh, camper. You could probably go anywhere from one day to maybe five days out in the field. So our table is adjustable. This is Lagoon, the Lagoon USA. Um, system, really easy to use. You can move it around. You can, you can uh, <clears throat> adjust the height. You can take it, this off. You don't need to leave it on if you don't want. One other feature that we have, which I haven't pointed out yet, is we. This one does have the Primo Lou option, which is a, uh, a flushing toilet. So it's below this compartment here, and this does flush. So it's a just a Thetford RV type toilet, and it it, it flushes. It's a great system. You get a black tank in the underbelly. With this option, the Primo Lou option, you also get a macerator. And what that does is it grinds up everything, the black tank, and then it allows you to hook up a normal garden hose. And then you can run that garden hose over to a, like a park toilet or whatever, and you can pump right into the existing system there to get rid of your, your black tank. Then you have some storage compartments below the, mat, the, <clears throat> the cushions here as well. Um, there's some storage here. This is where the propane tank lives. So there's no storage in that compartment. You do get a little bit of storage here as well, which we've got bedding in there right now. This is where all of our electrical systems lie, live. So you've got your inverter, you've got your uh, lithium iron phosphate battery, which I can point that out. So we, we have a uh, lithium iron phosphate battery by Ohmu in there. Great battery system. 
Well, that's the inside of a skinny guy camper. Um, there are a couple other items on the outside that I, I forgot. So we'll go back outside and uh, talk about those. We're back outside of a skinny guy camper. We've transitioned over to our, uh, our gray six and a half foot model. We've got um, a patent pending system I wanted to make sure I talked about. Um, it's, a, it's a gutter system that goes all the way around our bed. And what it does is when, the, when, it, when it, you're in a situation where you're out in the wilderness, let's say you need more water, um, the rain, if it rains, the rain can come down and collect in the gutter system, our water collection system. And we have uh, hose bed fittings that we've built into these the two corners of the, of the bed, the gutter system, which then allows you to hook a hose up from here over to our water fill. So you can essentially add, add water to your, your water system by way of these gutters, these uh, water collection ports. So I want to make sure I pointed that out. I did not point out earlier the propane tank location. So on the six and a half foot model, our tank is right here in the rear corner. So I just want to make sure I pointed that out. We have proper venting above and below for that tank. And we do have a small exterior storage compartment and that's up towards the front on the door side. And it's a small port, but it allows you to just have quick access. And you have access from the inside as well into this compartment. So you can toss stuff in there from the inside or the outside. And uh, that's pretty much it for Skinny Guy Camper. I'm Donovan Fredrickson from Skinny Guy Campers. I'm gonna take a few minutes to show how the camper easily closes, and then we're gonna go ahead and reopen the camper. So I'll just get started, and I'm gonna head up into the uh, camper to, to take apart some of the things inside. First, I'll un on my way in, I'll just unbutton the, the tent from the sidewall. First thing I like to do is take apart the dinette and stow it away. This table base is by Langoon USA. It's got a dovetail here to, to, to store the leg. And then we just set it on the floor and engage this channel. And then it has a magnetic hold back. Next thing I'll do is I'll need to put away all the, the seat cushions. There's a storage compartment down next to the toilet compartment that all four seat cushions will slide into. And then those will be up and out of the way. Next thing I'll do is I'll strap the mattress using the retention straps. That keeps the mattress in place when the lid closes over. Now I don't know if you can see it, but I have to take apart the, uh, disconnect all the utilities. These are all push button connections, really fast, really easy. Got to disconnect the LP and then the Truma sensor. Now the, the kitchen unit is, is able to set right on the floor. From here, I grab the, the fridge, I set it on the floor. I'll release the, uh, these, these uh, slide blocks. On my way out, I'll release the slide box that lowers the tent. And then we'll uh, head on outside. At this point, we can remove the ladder. Collapse the ladder, strap it. You can store this in the cab or right inside the camper. From here, I'll take this bed support off. These are uh, just pretty quick detach. They set right there. And then I gotta take this bed support loose. And then this bed support also is the push rod. And I put this pin in, make sure my lights. From here, we're just gonna go ahead and push close the, the lid. And 
release the push rod. And we have some, some stuffing on this side, but not very much. And then we'll go put the door in. The door panel has to put in before we buckle it down. This simply slides into these uh, pin locations. From here we can we can uh, buckle this side. Buckle this side. Put that we that pin away. Now this roof rack is a uh, single hand operation. You close it like that. There's a retention pin that goes in there. Put away the rest of your things and you're ready to travel. So that was uh, in a nutshell how uh, it goes from being fully set up to uh, ready to go down the road. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, we're Skinny Guy Campers. We can be found at skinnyguycampers.com or you can follow us at, at Skinny Guy Campers on Instagram and uh, Skinny Guy Campers on Facebook. So thanks for watching and uh, enjoy your day. Hey, I'm Jay Wellman with Overland Campers. We build camper shells for any truck, custom, eight foot, six and a half, five and a half, five foot, anything you want. They're camper shells focused on utility with the ability to build them out as far as you want. The guy behind me, he lives out of his and has done a number to his and same with this guy, insulation, walls, shelves, whatever. Anything kind of custom, we'll move stuff for you. We do half barn doors, hatches, we'll do some countertops, you can see on the inside. You can get some molly panels, mole panels, however they're pronounced, uh, counters. It's got a full queen size bed that slides out. On full size beds, it's more like a king size, but these slide out and become your full queen. There's four windows in the top, and then the whole setup teardown takes about 45 seconds each way. There's six latches on the outside. The whole thing lifts up and you're ready to go. And you can see on these ones over here, he used extruded aluminum to kind of do a full setup on his for his family and his kid. And then Matt's camper over here, he's got a diesel heater and a full setup to live out of in between working and weekends. So yeah, again, we're Overland Campers. Uh, we're based in Flagstaff, Arizona, so we're local to the expo. Our website is campoverland.com, campoverland.com, kind of weird spelling. And our Instagram is Overland Campers. Hi guys, I'm Joe with Harker Outdoors. Welcome to the Outside Adventure Expo. We're gonna show uh, our little campers here to you. First undo the latches on these guys. And then just pop it up. Then pull out the bow, and you're ready to start setting up your camp. So we've got a nice entry level at $74.99 to get into these things. Cool features about these that you're not gonna see in any other wedge style camper is we eliminated the crossbar going across from these. So now you don't have to crawl to enter into your tent. Another thing we've done is we have a bow on the top here, and we have an enclosure, the annex, that comes down past the tailgate. So now that just added an extra foot and a half to your camper space. So now you have the ability to get in, change your clothes, and then hop into bed. So another cool feature is, is if it's cold weather outside and you just want to hang outside your camper, you leave your bedding on the bed and just lift it up. And now you can set some chairs up inside here and just relax. That's our basic features of our camper. You can come over to uh, this one. This one gets a little bit crazier. We have a kitchen built out. Climb in here. With the camper, you just lift the bed up, keep your bedding on there. And then you can walk all the way in here. Get your pantry. You got your oven. You got your stove, sink, fridge. So tons of space in a five foot bed. 
So one of the cool features we did on this model is on the outside here, we put our little pantry so you can access it from the inside and outside. So no more crawling into the camper to actually load your food. You open the back, put your stuff in the fridge, and then all your dry goods in the pantry here. This hatch is on the back. Once it's taken off, it converts to a table as well. So trying to use a lot of things, keep the weight down. Our base model starts at 300 pounds. So it's a very lightweight camper for a lot of room. Our bed is 90 inches long by 58 inches wide. So you're getting about a queen width in a super long bed. So the, those are our main features, what make us a little bit special from everyone else. So you can come find us at harkeroutdoors.com or you can find us on Instagram at uh, Harker Outdoors and uh, you can find us on Facebook. So we got pictures there, information there. Come take a look at us, we appreciate you. Hey, I'm Drew Phillips, Vice Snow on Campers. We're in Tulsa, Oklahoma and uh, we build pop-up campers full size, mid size, even got some big hard side, full tops we'll be building on 5500s. And uh, so this is our prototype for the uh, Tacoma. So our prototype uh, composite for the Tacoma, like I said, we're gonna be building them for full size and everything, but it's a foam core, uh, fiberglass, exterior, interior with a gel coat, and uh, similar to our aluminum campers, but these are lighter and uh, just a little stronger build being the composite. So this is our New insulated canvas, four season. Exterior layer is a vinyl coat of polyester, Finsulate insulation, and the inside material is Sumbrella, which is still waterproof, but it's also, also breathable. Uh, we've started going with our new roof systems here that are a one-piece composite panel with the aluminum trim. And as you can see, the, the canvas is inset a little bit so it helps with water running off. So same as our previous ones, we use the Turn Overland product. So the entry door is Turn. We really like using these, uh, mostly for a couple features. The, the screen door is real good quality, real, real stout compared to most RV uh, screen doors. It's got a real thick screen on the inside, good for dogs. So you can leave them in there, they're not gonna tear through. Then you've got the thinner, uh, material on the outside for, for uh, mosquitoes and all that. It's got a three-point locking system, so when you lock it, it's not just the one. It's got these two as well. Works real well. Door's nice and thin, so you can just, we usually leave that closed and close this up. Windows are same, turn overland. European style, they've got the blackout uh, panel on the inside and the screen, and uh, so all the way around we've got those. And as I mentioned, our composite panels, the whole walls are, are the composite panels. We've got aluminum uh, extrusion for the corners. It's all structural together and uh, saves weight over the uh, aluminum we built previously. The tray, the flatbed is Summit Expedition Trucks. So it's out of Canada. We've been real happy with this. Got a, got a good, good amount of storage in it. Uh, so you got the boxes underneath. It's also got this great slide out tray in the back good place you could put kind of all your outdoor cooking stuff do your cooking outside put all sorts of stuff in there all your camping gear so one of the things we really want to do when we designed these campers was have good storage options i always got tired of having to climb in and out in and out to get things so a big deal was having these cargo hatches again from turn overland so if you're inside the camper this stuff if, even if you've got it as the shell or fully built out on the inside you can access these storage location so if you're at night and it's raining you need to grab something you can get it from in there if you're outside camping you can grab a chair firewood whatever you can come open these up i like using this front area as kind of the utility area keep some tools here when it's fully built out you can have the heater your water system all here we've got our power management our red arc system uh, and we're running their total vehicle uh, power management system with the red vision manager 30. we're running the new xp on 360 battery to charge everything up. Nice thing about that is with us being in Oklahoma, we plan on putting a Dometic 12 volt air conditioner on the roof. So the 360 amp hour will really power that well, give us the power. We'll have the Red Arc uh, solar on top to power that as well. So for this truck build, we, we wanted to get it all set up how, uh, how a lot of people would like to get set up. So we worked with some good companies. Our bumper is a CBI, all aluminum and perfectly set up with the uh, worn 12,000 Xeon winch in there, factor 55. We've got our bumper light, fog lights, 
ditch lights and, and windshield light, it's all uh, diode dynamics. Everything we're running is diode for the lights. Been real happy with those, put out a lot of great light. Uh, coming to the event, we hit a lot of fog, so having the, the ambered lights up front really, really cut through the fog well. And then we're running the Prince Sue rack up top. One of the things we wanted to have the camper sit as low as possible up here, but we also wanted to have access where you could get, where you could actually use the rack and put gear in it. Um, so we're working on the mounts to have a couple gallons of fuel up there and some traction boards. So on the inside, we started building our campers as shells. We had seen it on the market, there were slide ins that had shells, but nobody was doing flatbed. So, so other than our, our kitchen setup here, uh, we've got this set up as a shell. We do offer full build outs with the dinette in the rear, a bench across here, the dinette folds down in bed for kids, extra adult. And then of course you'll still be able to fully access the storage hatches from the outside. So we got the bed up top and we've got the option of having bed storage underneath will raise up, bed can slide out so you can get a larger bed set up. About six foot seven head clearance on the inside, plenty of room here. Again, I mentioned it's a one piece composite roof panel. We've got all of our red arc system here. We wanted to have it where it was easily accessible. So when the interior is built out, this will be in a cabinet area, but it'll easily be accessible. So you can get to uh, any fuses you need to change out or inverter. It's all pretty easily accessible to be able to maintain it. So with this being a composite on the Tacoma, it's really important that everything stays light and it's tough on a interior to keep the interior light. So as we build it out, We've built this just simple cabinet where we can still put water in, we can put our stove up on, and we've got some storage options. We've still got room for 20 gallons of water back behind here that'll be integrated in all this. 130 liter fridge here, 12 volt. And again, like I mentioned, we don't like to do all climbing in and out to get stuff. So having it right at the door, we don't have to climb in. You can just open it up, grab a drink, grab your food. Uh, it's real important to us to have everything set up where it's just easily accessible. You don't have to climb in all the time to get stuff. So I mentioned on the outside, uh, our insulated canvas. So this is the umbrella side of it. It's waterproof, stain resistant, and it's breathable as well, which is good, you know, in case somehow some moisture get inside, it's gonna breathe. And our, our blackout cover, so we do have, before the blackout cover, we've got our, our window. In case it's raining, you can have everything open. And our blackout cover is the same insulated, so. You can hang it down or put it up. We made sure to make these uh, windows as large as possible. So some, some other pop-ups I've had before, really small windows. And when you're in here, you want to be able to see out as much and let as much light and air through. So for lifting the roof, we've got on this one, we've got four actuators, 12 volt. We've got the hinges at the back. So when it's time for the roof to go up, we undo the latches on the outside, hit a button on the remote here, cut off switch on the red arc system. Top goes up and then all we gotta do is just go push the hinges in and turn the knobs in there and then it's good to go. And when it's time to take it down, same thing, just pull the, pull the knobs out, pull the hinges down, hit the button, it goes down. With the actuators and struts and even with the canvas, you know, in the wind there's no, no movement. So uh, nice and sturdy and uh, I don't know what the wind gusts were yesterday, but it's in probably 30. 30 mile an hour gusts maybe, and everything else going crazy and it stays nice and doesn't even look like it's got wind blowing against it. I mentioned on the outside, uh, the turnover on windows, they've got the screen. So I always keep the screens down just for bugs and everything, you can open it up. It's got a few settings for where the windows open. Also at night, you got the blackout screens. They've got a little bit of uh, foil insulation to them. So it's cold out, it's gonna help insulate a little bit. And I usually like at night, if I need to get a little bit of airflow, you can just kind of keep it just, just a little bit open there so you can get airflow through your fan. So a few options depending on what the weather is and everything. All right, if you'd like to find more info on us, our website is bisonoverland.com. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Bison Overland Campers. These are not your grandpa's campers. Hey, good morning guys. Arnold Baker here with Overland Explorer Vehicles out of Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. We're down at uh, day three of Expo Mountain West. Great turnout, the weekend's been fantastic, the weather's been even better. Uh, I'm here with Braxton. Braxton's, I'm just gonna give you a little walk around our camper. Not just our camper, but our Aluma tray. We designed and built this Aluma tray specifically for our flatbed version camper, the Hudson Bay edition, or the HBE for short. But we also had a customer that came forward and said, you know, darn, I already have one of your Camp X's. 
and I really like the flatbed and I need more storage. Is there anything you can do? So we designed what we refer to as the X boxes that go underneath the shoulder here of the camper. So you can actually use the Camp X or the Hudson Bay with this. And this gives you a ton of extra storage if you elect to go with the Camp X. So a few features about the tray itself. It's all aluminum, it's powder coated in-house. The actual bed of it is actually a urethane uh, polyurea kind of Linex coating. Um, further in the, into the headache rack here, you got two locking doors. Underbed tray storage is four boxes. They're all keyed the same as well as your headache rack. Those come standard with the camper. And as I said, these X side boxes, of course, are options should you decide to go with the Camp X. But in here is where you would store the foldable stairs. We'll look at those foldable stairs in a few minutes as we go around the back of the camper. But nice and secure, stored, stowed away. Lock them up, nobody's gonna steal them. Up here, you can store stuff like um, uh, max tracks or maybe tables. Uh, it depends on what, what kind of gear you got and what you wanna do. This particular one, uh, they just put this on here and they haven't made a modification to the exhaust system tip here. So the mud flaps aren't on this, but it does come with mud flaps and a stainless weight at the bottom with our logo. Coming around the rear, we've actually gone to uh, LED round lights for the, for the tray. Unfortunately, supply chain being what it is, we weren't able to supply this one with that, but he's actually got them in the shop. He'll be swapping them out after Expo. But also here is another feature we have. It seems to be quite popular. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a sliding drawer. It's 39 inches long. You can store items like firewood, whatever, whatever extra stuff you need to store. And then it's actually locked in position. You can actually, if you've got the HBE on here, of course, this would be the rear of the camper. The HBE has a side entrance door. You could actually use this for grilling. You could also do the same here, but it's kind of, it's a little more challenging, of course, with the rear entry door on the camp, uh, door on the camp X. But again, all lockable, keyed the same. Coming on to the headache rack here, you can option it with either gas and or diesel. So with the diesel, if it's a, it's a, a late model diesel truck, you also got the uh, def fill as well. So can, uh, that can be optioned. And then we switch over to the camper here. Uh, the Camp X is our sliding camper, six foot eight, front to back on the floor. It's for your full size trucks, not, not intended for an eight foot uh, bed, more for a uh, six foot, six and a half foot bed. Up here you've got, on the driver's side, a 20 pound horizontal uh, propane tank. And you can also stuff some other items in there as well. It's a washout tank. We get this from the emergency service uh, background that we've got. Uh, these are called washout, uh, washout cabinets. So you can actually wash them all out and the water just comes out. You've also got your Sagiv outside shower connection. A lot of people also refer to this as a bullfinch. It's more popular as a bullfinch. Uh, than actually Sagiv. Sagiv is actually uh, made in Israel. Lockable H2O for your fresh water, shore power connection and portable uh, solar connection as well. There is a, an optional solar panel. We use a 200 watt uh, solar panel. Uh, you can actually, with the Camp X, it is a manual lifting roof. So keep weight in mind when you're, you're lifting and also bringing the roof closed. So, Two solar panels, I would never go more than that. 400 watts seems to be plenty anyways uh, for what, this, what you've got to power inside the camper. These brackets that you see up here, they're designed for an outdoor shower cube like the Alucab shower cube or Kinsman or there's a number of different manufacturers. If we back up and look on this Camp M, you can see basically what we're talking about. Then coming more this way towards, towards the rear, all the appliances that we use in all of our products are state-of-the-art, the newest that's on the market, most reliable as well. We want to make sure that we got reliable product. So in, for heating water and for heating the uh, cabin air, we've gone with Truma with the Vario heat and also the Truma AquaGo, continuous hot water. So the nice thing about the AquaGo, again, it is continuous, but it's also got a, a secondary mode where it'll actually stay in the comfort mode and it'll actually maintain a temperature for you so you have an instant hot water. There's a little tiny reservoir about 0.3 liters, about 300 mil. So in regards to securing the camper to our trays, we use the torque lift uh, Derringer latches, these tie downs. What we really, really like about these, cam or these tie downs for the campers is that they've got jam nuts top and bottom. So once you get them adjusted for the corner that they're at, you can actually identify them with a felt marker as to which corner they're for. But also, because they're spring-loaded, and once you adjust them to that corner, you don't have to adjust them again. 
so you can take it off road with the confidence knowing that oh uh, darn I, I don't have to check I don't have to check my turnbuckles uh, tomorrow or the next day or anything like that or you don't have to worry about breaking a turnbuckle because again this is spring loaded there are fronts and rears they got a different spring load for the front and the rear application so all we're doing is we're just going into the corner bracket that is also meant for the jacks when you're removing the camper all we're using is a different adapter here for the camper now for if you've got a truck and you're not going with the bed what you can do is go with our truck bed mounting kit. So if you look on this Ranger, it's got a couple of ears on, on each side of the rear here. That's, going, that's indexed right into the truck frame itself. And that's how we do it. On the front, there's actually a mounting bar, a mounting plate rather, that uh, the camper will actually butt up against. There's actually a rubber mount, so to butt up, butt up against there. So you're not gonna get any kind of rubbing. And that entire mounting plate mounts direct to frame. So bolted right to the frame. So you're not using any kind of washers or something like that to bolt down your camper or using going into the, the factory locations, your tie downs, because oftentimes those are underrated. We, that's why we like to go right direct to frame. It's very important. So again, you got the confidence. You're going off road because these Derringer uh, torque lifts are spring loaded. It allows the camper to move around. So if your chassis is doing this, it allows the camper to do that because even with all the adhesives that we talked about before, they all stay very elastic. They got elastic properties, so everything's moving and we want to keep that moving. We don't want to have everything rigid locked down. This will always find its way back to center. Whatever is set at, if your camper moves when you're off road, it's going to find its way back to center. Yeah, coming back to the rear of the camper, you can see this one here. The owner has opted to use some stainless step downs. We only offer that with the option of the roof rack. This one does not have the roof rack, but up on the roof, and it's really challenging for, to, to capture it in video here, there's three sections of the L track. One at the very back, one mid, and one front on each side of the camper. So the roof rack that we make, it's all aluminum. It's actually eight inches high, so it's designed mainly for canoes. Also back here, you're gonna find our OEV uh, molly racks for the driver's side and for the passenger side. Those of course are options. The doors are really interesting. They're really good products. Um, we're quite impressed with them in that. It's just the quality of it that we really, really like. You got brass bushings on the hinge, for example. It's not your traditional RV door. And also you got this grid pattern. At first I wasn't sure what to think of it because it kind of blocked your view, but if you hit it, you don't have to worry about smashing and, and wrecking your screen over time. As a builder, we like to use premium products because these, these campers are designed for off-road use. And that's what we design it solely around. So we don't use wood. Even in the structure of the camper, it's all composite, which I'll get into. But for now, we'll just focus on the, uh, on the furniture. The furniture, cabinetry, it doesn't matter if it's our Camp M for a midsize our Camp X for the full size, our HBE, our base camp, our summits, it's all the same. It's aluminum, powder coated aluminum. And it's in different gauges depending on the application. The countertops themselves, we use a, uh, a marine grade plywood papered on the bottom. It's the only wood that you're gonna find in this camper is on the table and the countertop itself. For the Camp X and the HBE, you've got a two burner gas stove, cooktop rather, and a sink, both with flip down glass count, uh, tops. Going down further, uh, you got, as you can see here, this is elevated on the dinette floor. And we do that so you can actually have some shoe storage. So you're not cluttering up the aisle here with shoes and boots and things like that. Just kick them underneath here. It's, it's actually quite nice. This table does fold down. So with the back cushions down, you actually get 65 inches, or pardon me, six foot five inches of room north south by 38 inches to the wall to here is your narrowest uh, narrowest point so it's actually a decent sized bed so you can actually use that if you're boondocking and you don't want to open up the roof or something like that if you're in an unsecure area or something like that also inside here we the dual pane acrylic window uh, that's a really nice feature it's nice and large you can get a nice cross breeze going with it and of course it's got the pull-up blind pull down screen into our back control center here all of our doors and drawers, uh, you don't see the drawers in this particular model, but you would in our HBE, Base Camp and or Summit. The, the doors and drawer fronts are, are a product called Starboard. Uh, it's a polymer. And again, we don't like to use the wood here only because of environmental cycling. Hot to cold, dry to moist. 
so you, you're not going to worry about uh, swelling, cracking, that sort of thing. Also, this interesting fact is that it's actually food safe, so you can actually use it for a cutting board if you wanted to. So we have, again, have our control board here, control panel, and inside everything is nicely kept in terms of all the wiring, all the plumbing. We're using the high temperature and low temperature uh, PEX. So for winterizing is a breeze, you can actually bypass your, your aqua go. We've also got valves to the uh, outside shower. So should you decide to use this three season and you're worried that you might get into some uh, colder temperatures, you can winterize your camper, then isolate that outside shower port and then you can actually reintroduce water into your camper if you so desire and not worry about traveling and freezing and, and breaking that port. So little things like that, we've, we've tried to take everything into consideration when doing it. Back at the control panel, we also have uh, aligned ourselves with another good product, Red Arc. Red Arc's out of Australia. In this camper, the Camp X, the HBE, we use the Manager 30. And what the 30 stands for is 30 amps, whether it be solar, uh, coming from your truck's alternator or from shore power. It's only going to allow 30 amps to go to your house battery in the camper. Our, our campers are set up for virtually any type of battery. You don't want to use a battery that's going to vent for obvious reasons. You don't want to blow yourself up. So an AGM, sealed AGM and or lithium iron. Lithium iron seems to be a really popular choice. But getting back to the Red Arc, we chose the Red Arc because it's very small. And not only very small, it does a lot of things. It's your solar controller, it's everything built right into one component. That one lives right back here. So it's nice and close to the battery run because the batteries sit down. There's a slide out tray right down here underneath the seat. You slide out your batteries. So it's got a really nice short path because you're using some pretty, pretty sizable cabling uh, going up to that Red Arc. We are also evaluating uh, Red Arc's new product, Red Vision. Uh, if we end up doing that, it will probably be offered as a premium upgrade for a power system. But again, we're just in the evaluation process of that, so nothing, nothing to talk about that yet. Uh, we're looking forward to testing that out this fall. As far as keeping your, your, your beverages and your food cold, uh, we have two options. Standard for 2022, it does not come with a fixed fridge. That is an option. It's a 65 liter Dometic compressor style fridge which sits right here. It's in its own cabinet, has the same countertop, sits at this height. So if you wanted to have a king bed extension, the mattress would just come over top of here and over top of the fridge cabinet and, and away you go. As far as if you want to go with a portable fridge, the owner of this one is elected to remove the seat cushions in the rear and position the, the, the ARB cooler back here, which is an option. We actually, at the factory, we make provisions for it to sit right here. It seems to be dual purpose you can do you can do either um, it's really neat having it at the back if you don't have kids and you don't need the bed space it's really quite nice at the back actually but if you need the bed space that's different for 2022 for sleeping I should mention that we're gonna have actually have a gurney style bunk here and what I mean by gurney style is just gonna be a couple of poles with the canvas so if you got small children um, they can sleep up on that one down on the bottom one up on top of that and then when you're in day use you actually roll it up and you set it up on top of the bed here. This particular camper for sleeping is set up with our king bed extension. So you've actually got a queen bed standard, but if you're wanting to sleep north, south, and not crawl over each other, you would just slide this back. So in travel mode, it's actually notched. These, uh, these uh, side mounts are actually notched forward and back. So in travel mode, it's not gonna come sliding off. And it's aluminum as you can see there. So if you wanted to use that, you would just lift it up pull it forward and keep going until it falls into the notches and then drop in the additional mattress. The owner of this camper has not done that. Uh, he doesn't even have his extra mattress in the camper right now. So now we can talk about the construction. Uh, we can talk about the camper itself. We use three different types of composite panels in our campers because every composite has a, its own purpose and its own duty. So in the floor, for example, it's a um, polypropylene honeycomb and it's inch and a half thick because we're just looking for structural uh, integrity. That's really all we're looking for. We're not really looking for thermal, even though it does have some thermal properties. We're not looking for sound attenuation. We're just looking for strength. And that's what we use there. On top of that, in the camper, what you see is a product called Lawn Seal. 
It's antimicrobial and antibacterial. It's used in uh, government buildings, hospitals, anywhere you got really high traffic. It's a heavier product to use, but it's very durable. We, we, we believe in it, we really, really like it, it works well. Uh, coming up onto the, the side walls of the camper, it's our proprietary own uh, composite panel. It's actually made in the United States. We designed it ourselves, but um, it, it, it's a, a fantastic product in that we wanted to engineer out delamination, which is inherently uh, a problem with, with some composites. Some builders decide uh, rather than figuring out a way around delamination, they figure out a way to repair it but we want to just figure out a way around it. So that's what we've done. On either side, it's fiberglass uh, going in, then it's honeycomb polypropylene on both sides, and then the center core is actually foam. Now the foam, it's um, made out of recycled water bottles. So that's a plus, we get to actually repurpose uh, water bottles. So that's nice. Going up further into the uh, soft wall itself, the soft wall has three layers to it. The inside is a fire rated canvas, then you've got a center insulative fill and then on the outside is a product made by Top Gun. It has the highest UV rated nylon out of any marine outside fabric and uh, it's a coated nylon and it, it of course needs some maintenance from time to time at least annually. Uh, you should use a Top Gun spray just to to recoat it uh, even on your vertical threads. Uh, we encourage people to visit our website because there's there's different types of silicone sprays, there's some nanotechnology, a lot of things that you can actually use. We don't use a thread that actually swells when it's exposed to water because that same thread is not UV stable, therefore over time you're going to have a premature failure with it. So rather than that we just elect to go with the different uh, coatings for the outside and it works really really well. The roof itself is an FRP skin on both sides and it's uh, an EPS foam and we use the EPS foam it gives us some R value but more importantly it gives us a lightweight roof. Our roof on a Camp X is about 140 pounds um, without the fan and without the solar panel on it. The lightweight uh, characteristics are super important because it is a manual lifting roof manual lifting and then also coming down. So, so we always tell folks, you know, what goes up must come down. So keep that in mind. If you like to go with a roof rack or something like that, you're gonna wanna unload it prior to um, raising your roof. Uh, if you've got snow load, you're gonna wanna take care of that stuff too, as well uh, prior to coming down, taking the roof, roof down. Now again, this is only marketed and advertised as a three season camper. I just mentioned snow load. But people, uh, for whatever reason, are, are using this, stretching it out into four seasons where possible. And in some parts of the country, you're able to do that. So we fully encourage it. Uh, the water's the only concern with freezing. So as long as you're mindful of that, you'll have no problem. At the top of the wall, this outside wall here on the camper, there's an aluminum extrusion that goes around the entire perimeter. So there's a thermal path because that extrusion wraps the, whole the, the entire wall. Now, uh, the way that we combat that is we use a product called Eva Foam. It's hydrophobic, so it won't absorb water. And it's also fire rated, so if you actually hold a flame to it, it's certainly not going to catch. It'll smoke, but it won't catch. But that's pretty much it for the inside. I'd like to talk to you outside about the uh, exoskeleton on the outside walls. So all of our extrusions are our own proprietary extrusions. We own the, die, we own the dies, so we get the extrusions made specifically for us. Although I wish we could just buy it off the shelf, we couldn't, so we had to design everything ourselves. So it's all powder coated. So wherever you, uh, you have a horizontal wall meeting a, another wall, vertical wall, whatever it is, we use this exoskeleton. So the important thing here is everything is bonded together. You come to a corner cap, you'll see some rivets here. These are aluminum rivets. Uh, the only time we will actually use any rivets is when we're connecting metal to metal. We also use some adhesive behind there as well. But one thing that's really important, this is three inch by three inch on this exoskeleton. So when we were actually doing all of our testing for adhesives uh, a few years back, and we continue to test new adhesives as they become available, we found that the adhesive that we settled on for our product at about 64 to 6,600 pounds, you'll actually start to get some separation. Not necessarily the adhesive itself, it's sort of like a metal weld. It won't fail at the, the adhesive joint itself, but typically right beside it. That's where you get your failure point. But however, it takes, before you're actually gonna get any kind of separation of that adhesive, we're talking 64 to 6,600 pounds, uh, which is incredible. That's, that's 
that incredible amount of uh, pressure. So when we're bonding these things up, for every lineal inch you move, whether it be horizontal, horizontal or vertical, for every lineal inch, you've got nine square inches of bonded surface. So getting back to that testing, so on every 12 inch by one inch, it would take that 6,400 to 6,600 pounds to get separation or failure. So now you do the math. For every lineal inch, you've got nine square inches. It's tons. So if, actually, if this starts to come apart, I'm afraid you've likely been in a horrific accident and um, I, ho I hope you're okay. But should you do some damage to the skins of the uh, panels, uh, we call this the Corvette finish. You can take this to any collision center and they'll be able to fix this up for you right away. No problem. And then I, I think it's important also to note on our corner caps that are especially up here, either side, because on the other, on the passenger side, it's also set up for a um, 270 degree awning, where there, there's so many different awnings available. So we made it, tried to make it as universal as possible. We designed around the Alu Cab 270 because it seems to be the most robust ones that one would be been able to find, because most people will actually roll it out and not use the actual leg. There's one leg that's actually included with the awning and normally they don't use it. So it puts a lot of force right at that hinge point of that awning, which is right at the corner on the other side. So we made sure, or pardon me, right here at the corner of the back, right, rather, on the other side. Um, so we made sure that it's extremely strong. A lot of people ask us, what about the bed? How much weight can the bed hold? So as you notice, we don't have any kind of gusset here uh, to support the bed. In testing that we've done, we set this entire set up onto a bench and we we just did worst case scenario so we didn't do all the correct uh, procedures that we normally use for putting our extrusions onto panels we didn't sand we didn't clean no priming no nothing we just put on the adhesives put everything together let it cure and then we came back so right here is your actual fulcrum we had a hydraulic press at this end and we're actually pushing down right on the end and it took just over a thousand pounds before we started to see deflection right at the fulcrum here on the side on the side walls. Now, when we did that testing, that was a couple of years ago. That was with our Gen 3 panels, which was a urethane foam core. We've got again, we've gone to the um, we've gone to a different foam core now, which is actually stronger than the urethane that we used in the past. Also, with these new corner caps right at this point at this fulcrum on both sides, we've redesigned this corner caps they actually tie into that top of wall extrusion. So that wasn't as part of the test. So that's also added additional strength. So we're gonna do another test. I'm, we're hoping to do it this winter, check it out again, because again, the new panel and the new way of doing our corner caps, and we'll probably set it up so we actually do everything together uh, correctly in our, in our build out, like sanding, cleaning, priming, whatever we're doing. And then we're gonna test it again. We're going to get a pool going. My guess is about 1,375 pounds before we start to see deflection here. And again, that's right at the very end or the very north end of the camper. You're not going to put 1,000 pounds there. So it's completely safe. It's not going to come apart. You have nothing to worry about. Our roof to go up and down, we have the springs, we have the uh, hinges inside. They were actually spring assist on those hinges themselves. Those springs were actually made for us to, uh, to the specifications that we require. We also use gas struts. The gas struts are only there for assist. They're not gonna do all the work for you, but it's actually pretty easy to take it up and take it down. Uh, you just gotta be very careful in bending, bend of the knees, keep your back straight, that sort of thing. It actually goes up and down quite easily. So um, most people, doesn't matter what demographic, most people have no issues at all. That pretty much sums it up. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out to us at our factory in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. You can reach us, uh, get our contact information via our website or any one of our dealers off our website. You can actually locate a dealer, get in touch with those guys. Uh, any one of them is a valuable source uh, or resource for information and not just for information on our camper. These guys are also very good at what they do. This particular rig that you see here is uh, built uh, in Frederick, Colorado uh, by BVO and it's one of the owner's rigs but they do all the suspension work, they do all of the accessories, um, they'll really make sure they'll just not just sell you a, a kit where it's uh, yeah this is what you need, no they'll take a look at the weight balance and all that stuff, they'll take a look at your chassis because every year is different, it seems every generation of truck is different and there's also different suspensions and things like that that are coming out all the time. So they're right on top of things. They're in, always in good communication with their other vendors in regards to that sort of thing. So if you got any questions, by all means, get a hold of us, man. We'd love to talk to you.
Hi, my name's Kelsey. I'm with Supertramp Campers. We're out of Golden, Colorado. We're taking a look here today at our flagship LT. So this is our full-size truck, truck camper. It's fully composite, so that means no rivets, no wood, no aluminum. We do everything in-house, so our composite shell is made all in-house. So we'll take a look at it. It's sitting here on a Tundra, five and a half foot bed. It is designed with an 82 inch floor plan, so pretty much it hangs out a little bit on this camper. But if you look here at the F-150, it sits nice and flush with that. When we're taking a look at it, the big differentiator for us is that we have electric linear actuators that raise the camper up and down in 10 seconds. So that's just a press of the button, raises up, you don't have to do anything else. So then we'll take a look at some of the other cool features. This client uh, optioned in for the inside shower, so there's a five gallon gray water tank in here that is easy gravity drain there. Then we also offer a huge exterior pull-out tray for all of your gear. So put all your dirty gear, anything like that in there. We also do keyless entry. So just a four six digit code so that you can get it in and out. If you give your friends the code, they may take some of your beverages. And then also we do two 11 pound propane tanks here. So it's nice that they're on a pull-out tray, easily access them and those are dedicated to your camper. So our door is also super robust. It has the same drill retention as plywood, so you can do additional storage here if you would like. And then right now what you're looking at is our standard white. Uh, so our campers come out of the mold white, but you can wrap it with a 3M film as well. Uh, so you can match your truck, do anything fun like that. If we look down the side of the camper, we really try to keep it nice and streamlined so that it looks really good on your truck. And then we embed steel plates on the side so that you can mount any type of jerry panels, molly, jerry cans, molly cans, or anything like that. So uh, the lin extra electric linear actuators raise it 26 inches, so it's six foot nine tall in here. Uh, we have a true queen size bed with huge windows. Each window is zippered mesh, so you can actually fully open the window if you'd like. Zippered clear vinyl, and then zipper insulated shade. We do a true queen size bed with a four inch mattress. One thing that's really nice about our campers is that you can actually sit up full size in it. It's 36 inches of space here. Then we do underbed storage standard. So huge amount of storage here for all your clothes and items there. It's on a strut so that they can stay open. And then our fabric is a little bit different than a lot of other campers. So it's a layer of waterproof breathable, a layer of insulation, and then a layer of waterproof breathable. That allows it to behave more like a winter jacket instead of like a raincoat. So it doesn't trap humidity inside and it allows it to breathe a little bit. Then under each booth is additional storage. So this is completely open here. And then there's a 24 gallon freshwater tank hidden under there at the front of the truck for center of gravity. Then additional deep storage here that goes all the way to the basement. So super deep fits camp chairs or anything like that. Then we work our way around to the most exciting storage is your toilet. <laughs> and we do our own custom shower curtain. So all you do is you hook into these magnets up here and you can take an inside shower. So there's a five gallon gray water tank dedicated to the shower there. You can sleep one adult here when it's down. And then we also do a bunk bed solution. We also embed steel here so that you can do an L-Track solution for additional storage. So then when we look at appliances, they're all hot, hidden under here. So this is a Truma Combi heater. It is silent. A lot of heaters work really well, <laughs> but they're so loud that you don't want to run them at night. So this runs off of our two 11 pound propane tanks and is silent. 100 amp hour lithium iron battery. You can add up to three more batteries in there. And then there's 300 watts of solar standard on every camper. Smart shunt so that you can track your power usage. 65 liter isotherm fridge. Sorry, it's gonna open the wrong way, but it also has an ice cube tray here. And then interior kitchenette storage. So here's that shower curtain that I was talking about. It's got its nice little loops. It's a ripstop material that dries really quick. Two Max Air fans. You can use one remote, turn one on, turn the other. Really easy, push pull, and then also LED lights here. We have an exterior light, we have a water pump, and then we have the up and down. Nice deep sink here. This is your shower hose. So this is on a 10 foot hose that you can pull in and out. Two burner stove, and then plenty of room to prep your food here. And then an additional kitchen storage here with the bamboo interior as well. Our flooring is marine grade vinyl. So literally you can take this out, power wash it and throw it back in. All of our uh, cabinetry is also composite. So super durable, really easy to clean and really lightweight. We do a bunk bed. I think I mentioned that, but you can also really comfy here and a table solution here with a lagoon table, 20 inch swivel table. Do you want to see it go up and down?
So that's 10 seconds. You can sit in here while it's down or you could stealth camp. So one person could sleep here really easily and have another person sit here. You can still access your fridge. You can still access the toilet. <laughs> uh, and then the lights still work as well. So if you wanted to hang out in here, exterior light, and then now we can raise it. And you're good to go. Well, thanks for checking out our flagship LT. You can find us on the web at www.supertrampcampers.com. You can also follow us on Instagram at supertrampcampers. Feel free to reach out to us also at info at supertrampcampers.com if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Hey guys, my name's Micah. We're out here at Overland Expo 2021. I'm at the Dometic booth and I've got my DIY kind of creation here at the booth. It's a 2001 Toyota Tacoma with a bunch of just garage kind of shop work and uh, yeah, we'll take you for a little spin. I'll kind of show you what it's about and we'll look at a couple of the features we built in. So come check it out. All right, so basics is it's 2001 Toyota Tacoma, bought it bone stock, 208,000 miles on it. It now has got 250. Um, it's on 33s, just a simple about two inch, three inch lift in the back. Um, I do have airbags now. Front bumper is a coastal off-road uh, self-weld kit. Do you have a winch in there, onboard air, and it does have front and rear lockers with a factory rear locker and a air locker in the front. But besides that, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the dash and I wanna show you something cool that I did with the touchscreen retrofit. So one of the things about these older trucks that's both good and bad is one, they're really small, which is good on the trails. Two, uh, it's not super comfortable uh, on long highways, so I wanted to kind of make the cockpit of the truck a little more comfortable or do what I could. So right now it's rocking uh, seats from a Mercedes out of a um, of an ML 300, uh, Craigslist deal, just custom fit them, and then I also have a 10 inch touchscreen with a homemade piece of aluminum that replaces the dash, wrapped it in leather, and it houses all my switches, which allow me to do like roof lights, onboard air, surround lights, and uh, just all my accessories and stuff. So that's been like a pretty good game changer for road trips because now I've got Google Maps, I've got Apple CarPlay, all that kind of stuff. So kind of stoked on that. It makes the interior like that much nicer. So that was one of my favorite, favorite mods. Of course, being at Dometic, we've got room for the fridge. I have their uh, CFX 35 in here, which has been awesome. If you have a tiny car like this or a first gen Tacoma, this uh, fridge is probably the best one I can think of size wise. You just don't take up too much space, but it's got plenty of room for you know three or four days on the road. Uh, depending on how you pack, it's been really good for me. And I just have it powered with a uh, battery pack and a portable solar panel, which is on the roof. So that's been working really good. And that uh, seat, like semi seat delete, is totally removable. It's just a piece of plywood, carpet over the top, bolts in, bolts out, and uh, you can have full seats back if you want. So yeah, that was kind of a fun little project as well. Rock sliders, that was my first welding project. <laughs> so basically I had the truck um, for about a year and a half and um, had it just with the classic camper shell and I was sleeping in the back of the camper shell and it worked fine for me on trips. It, you know, it was just enough to squeeze in there if I went diagonal and I had like a DIY platform. But after a while, I just really wanted to have more space and be able to bring like a friend or my brother or my wife. So I really wanted to try and do something that could create that space. So that's how I came up with this, um, which is like the latest thing I've done on it. And it's a full standalone flatbed tray on its own and then a removable camper that goes on the back and allows me to sleep. Uh, it's a 6'6 six, six inside, uh, basically like a uh, queen size bed. And you can sleep with it closed or you can sleep with it open and uh, totally weatherproof and stuff. So that's been awesome. I just kind of just finished that up. So that's kind of the main thing I've been doing for the last five months <laughs> in the garage. So one of the things that uh, was most fun to design was this removable storage. I knew I wanted the flatbed to be high enough to allow the wheels to have the factory up travel because I still want to take this on trails. So I wanted to take advantage of creating that space and have some watertight storage. I wasn't really sure what I was going to be putting in it, but just wanted to make sure I created that space. So I came up with this, which allows the uh, Pelican case to tuck away and then come fully out and then also fully open. So you could do drawer slides, but you wouldn't be able to get this case 
far enough out to be able to open the lid like this. And then the other thing I wanted to make sure was since I lost some space by doing a hard case instead of like a aluminum box, was that I wanted to make sure this was still removable. So this totally comes out. You could swap it out, bring it inside or whatever you need to do. And then it just goes right back. So kind of one of my favorite things about the truck. <laughs> so for suspension, actually I have a stock Tacoma leaf pack in there. And then I Craigslisted another leaf pack for the same truck and basically multiplied the leaf. So instead of going from long, medium, short, I cut up the old leaf pack and added it to it. Now it goes long, a little less long, medium, a little shorter and totally short. So it just kind of adds more support and that'll hold the flatbed just fine. Uh, but it is a lot more sway now with uh, no sway bar in the front and the higher weight of the camper. So I added airbags and I can turn those up and when I'm on the road, eliminate the sway. But I also built in a system where I can isolate left and right bags with this, fill them either individually or open them together. So they're tied together. And then also there's a switch back there that lets me open them completely. So even if you have no air in there when you're on a trail and you got to up travel, uh, the air is coming right out, it's not building pressure. And the airbags are also on cradles. So you get uh, unlimited down travel. And then when you open that up, it's kind of just like having a big bump stop and uh, you're able to maintain that up travel too. So yeah, it's another little detail. Onboard air, of course, fills it up. So that's pretty much it. I mean, there's tons of details, but that's the gist of it. Just kind of like a little adventure truck. I could take last minute, show up three in the morning, could be raining, could be, 50 mile an hour winds and I can still sleep in that with it closed, totally comfortable out of the elements. And uh, that was kind of my goal. So I've been really happy with it so far. I basically just finished it to this amount the last few weeks and excited to, uh, to be getting out on some trips and getting to use it. All right, guys, thanks for taking the time to check out my project. If you are interested in more details, I go into a ton of detail on my own channel and Instagram account where I've kind of documented how this goes. And if you search Overland under budget online, it'll pull up my website, my Instagram, and also my YouTube channel, all the same name and uh, lots of details there. So definitely feel free to reach out, take a look. And uh, if you have any questions, send me an email or something and I might be able to get back to you. So yeah, thanks for taking the time. and checking out the truck. Hi, my name is Phil Villanueva from Vagabond Outdoors. We make pop-up campers that are constructed out of eight, eighth inch aluminum. This is our most common model, the Drifter. It fits a Toyota Tacoma, which makes up the bulk of our customers. We also make campers for Chevy Colorados, other mid-sized trucks, as well as full-size trucks. We currently have one here on a Dodge Ram 2500 take you around to the interior. This is our optional rear door panel. It has a turn overland door. That has a really nice integrated screen. And it has not only has no SIA mesh, but it also has a security screen. On the interior, we have the Goose Gear system. This one was specifically designed for the Vagabond Drifter. They currently offer a, a more universal system, but it will have the same great features. This one includes a double drawer storage, larger storage behind the fridge cabinet, and a side slide fridge that's designed specifically for the rear door option. Otherwise, it would slide directly back. We also have a few different awning options. These are the front runner awnings. We have this one hard mounted to the back, and we also have the 2.5 meter awning on quick release mounts on the side. We have several different window options. We have the front runner door that we have on our old 86 Toyota. We also have a slider window, a solid wind door, a uh, top hinge door with two T-handles. We also have a glass wind door with two T-handles. And we will be offering the Turnoverland acrylic windows shortly. The standard features of the camper are front and back windows, uh, an insulated roof that's formed out of one piece of aluminum, uh, one piece of eighth inch aluminum. It also comes with a three inch thick mattress. It's 80 inches long, folds up 
over the cab over section and it also includes our our tent which is a little different some of, than some of the other ones because it has three layers it has a mesh screen a clear vinyl window and a and a privacy screen the rear of the tent does not have uh, the clear vinyl but it fully opens to the outside it's great for taking pictures this truck also has white powder coat the base option is bare aluminum like the roof on this truck uh, we also have an optional fan optional uh, l-track mounts on the roof uh, we have our custom feet the mount to the l-tracks and we are using front runner <coughs> outfitters slotted bars on the roof as far as solar options go we have an option to just provide uh, solar gland and route the wires to any of the corner panels in the camper if you're going to provide your own solar panel. We also offer Merlin solar panels in a 165 and 225 watt version. So we can outfit you with a bare bones camper. You can modify yourself or we can, or we can do a fully outfitted version that is basically turnkey for your truck. You can find out more information on our website. It's www.vagabondoutdoors.com. Hey guys, I'm Kyle with Scout Campers here at Overland Expo West. We didn't have a booth this event, but we're hanging out with the Overland Journal, who uh, picked up a Kenai a couple months ago. And we're just going to give you guys a quick overview of our rig. This is one of our larger eight-foot models, perfect for that bigger family trying to hit off the grid. Uh, on a GMC 1500 AT4, we released this actually about January this year, and we've been getting great, tremendous feedback from the community as we uh, kind of grow this new brand within adventure manufacturing. The beautiful thing is actually the solid construction of the unit. So having these hard composite walls with extrusion allow for a lot of space, but also light. This camper currently is coming in at 1,400 pounds fully loaded. This one, when we remove the jacks, remove the tailgate, this GMC 1500 with a 2200 payload, payload capacity can handle it just fine. And uh, that's a question we get a lot from people is how? Well, it's the new materials. I'm going to show you the other side where we got a lot of storage options also. One of the big features on the Kenai is a large exterior storage compartment where you can store really just a variety of gear, uh, extra jerry cans, propane tanks, chairs. And then we do keep two 10 pound propane tanks in a compartment up front. This is the interior of the Kenai, our largest model. You can see here we got some large open windows uh, that include both a screen and a cover to block out UV light. We do also have a propane heater, sink, onboard water. We do option it with an integrated stove, uh, or sorry, countertop stove. Cooler, Dometic. Nice king size bed, skylight, and then hanging options for all that gear you might have, uh, as well as we do have hanging bags that integrate well into the ceiling. All right, thanks for joining me and checking out the Scout Kenai. You can find us online at scoutcampers.com, Instagram at Scout Campers, Facebook, Pinterest. We even have a TikTok. So definitely give us a follow and I'd like to hear more from you guys. See you on the trail. I'm Peter Williams. I'm uh, from Super Pacific. We're based in Portland, Oregon, and we make um, pop-up camper shells. So I'll walk through what we're doing. Uh, we designed the canopy out of laser cut brake formed aluminum that we um, rivet together in our shop. Designed it in the same style as an airplane. So these uh, box beams are riveted together. They create hollow channels, horizontal and vertical, all the structural elements. Um, those also serve as wire chases. So we added uh, cover plates to the vertical components so you can run wires up, down, and land whatever accessories you want to populate it with. Uh, our doors are all key to like. You can lock them. Um, we tried to make just a commercial grade canopy that was highly secure. These are lash points for accessories. This gunnel is going to direct water around the opening, full size opening to get gear in and out. We designed the tent. We've got two T slots up here. They can mount uh, anything you want to. We make a universal awning bracket for folks that want to run awnings on their setup. Got a lash point here, serves as a handle to step up into the truck. We built the tent around the X-Pad mattress. There's an additional 20 inches of space from the mattress to the head wall, so you can pass from the inside the canopy right up past these uh, removable modular floor panels and come and go from your bed without um, having to disrupt anything up there. The bed itself can be pushed forward and you can convert over. You can convert to a full standing height setup. Just like that. So now you've got full height in your truck bed to do whatever you want, you know? 
Uh, to close the tent, to go back to sleep mode, you pull this out, your mattress lays out flat. You want to land your modular floor panels back in the hole. Whoops. And then you just grab the tents up here, pull down. There's a bungee system on the interior that folds the tents up for you. And as it comes down, you are just organizing the material right by the tailgate. And you're done. To open it, just the opposite. Pop these latches, push it up about 10 inches, and it'll set sail on its own. That's kind of the quick and dirty. We're Super Pacific, we're based in Portland, Oregon. You can find us at superpacificusa.com and uh, email us at info at superpacificusa.com. Hey, I'm Matt Ward from Hallmark Manufacturing out of Port Lupton, Colorado. We're here at the 2021 Overland Expo Loveland, Colorado. This is our Hallmark K2. We've been building pop-up, slide-in pop-up truck campers since 1958. The Hallmark K2 is an eight-foot slide-in camper. It'll fit a six-and-a-half-foot bed or an eight-foot bed. Lots of custom amenities. We can put lithium batteries, uh, AGM batteries, uh, toilet systems, shower systems, and solar systems. Really, we do a lot of custom pop-up truck camper uh, work. The K2 is best suited with a three-quarter ton truck. We do have other models suitable for half-ton trucks. We use all molded composite construction. The composite construction is done right here in Colorado. Soft wall is uh, four-season insulated, and that's a standard feature for Hallmark. You don't have to add any other Arctic packages or anything like that. Furnace equipment is traditionally propane, but we do do diesel upon request. And the roof lift system is uh, unique to Hallmark Manufacturing. It's a worm gear system capable of lifting 400 pounds in addition to the weight of the roof. So you can put your kayaks, canoes on the roof without having to remove them and still raise and lower the roof. Our roofs are all one piece. There are no seams to, to leak, uh, no maintenance to, to do. The lower half is not a monocoque design. It's actually a sandwich design. And that sandwich design is because we need the, the corners to flex. Fiberglass doesn't like to flex. So you either have to have a suspension system underneath the, the chassis we don't have that luxury on truck up, trucks, so we need the camper to flex. Inside the Hallmark K2, traditional was a cassette toilet in this passenger side rear. You've got uh, a compressor fridge, which is 4.2 cubic feet. Choice of uh, oven or just a two burner cooktop. Um, you can have other sink choices, such as uh, stainless steel, molded, or even the glass top sink combos. For sleeping, we have a couple sleeping options. We have an east-west sleeping option or a north-south, and this is a north-south sleeping option. Our dinette also converts into a bed, so you have another bed here. This is six foot two inches, so you can sleep a, a fairly large person. Overhead cabinets are standard, so storage uh, on the roof and storage underneath the bed. Batteries are inside and insulated. This is running lithium batteries. You wanna make sure that those stay heated, and we design that into the camper. For more information on Hallmark Manufacturing, you can find us on the web at www.hallmarkrv.com. Hi, my name is Mike. I work for Go Fast Campers. We are here at Overland Expo West in Flagstaff, Arizona. This is the V2 model of our camper. All extruded aluminum. We moved from the uh, steel frame of the previous version to extruded aluminum. Bolted surface is just as strong as the welded surface on the V1. What the aluminum allowed us to do was uh, cut down our build time in about half while making a superior product. So we can crank out about 40 of these a week right now currently and are looking at upping that production number. Uh, basically what the camper is, is a uh, fully closable and accessible camper shell. Got aluminum panels on the outside with integrated stiffeners, uh, cool latch system here. We've got some interior latch design too, so you can get in and out of the camper on your own. And then up here, we actually have the modular floor system. And what that does is it allows you to get into the tent portion of the camper from the bed. And then of course, up there, you've got the tent. We use really, really high quality ripstop material in the tent. We do two cool colors, the tangerine dream and the stone. And uh, one of the real big hitting features for our camper is that it's the lightest camper on the market. This camper coming in at only about 250 pounds, which is the same as a standard reinforced fiberglass shell. Mounting system is very robust. We do very thoroughly test our products before we uh, 
take them out. And uh, we're super stoked to show them here at the show. You guys can find us mostly on Instagram. We don't do any kind of paid ads or anything like that. Uh, we also have our own forum, forums.gofastcampers.com, which is a really cool spot to see some neat build outs like this one here. You can uh, also find us at uh, gofastcampers.com. Make your deposit today. Welcome everyone to Overland Expo West 2021 here in Flagstaff, Arizona. My name is Glenn Pratt and my company is called Red River Rigs, headquartered in Amarillo, Texas. And we're gonna be talking about our primary product today called the American Safari JXL. The American Safari JXL is a Jeep extension and camper conversion system. Today I'd like to detail the American Safari JXL system from you and the different components, both internally and externally. Starting on the outside, it's important to note that this system is an extension. It's longer than your stock Jeep. Your stock Jeep ends right here. We attach a steel frame extension system right here. Then we have a longer top with integrated tent and other features and some different bumper options for you. And now let's look at some of the interior setups. On this vehicle, we're gonna look at the first of our different interior options. We call this open concept. It's very good for people who need to bring a lot of cargo on their journeys, a lot of room for customization with fridge freezers and other things. And if you come in a little closer, you can see that there's a lot of extra storage options that we have available to us because we do have an extended Jeep. First, we have extra storage available in the extensions themselves. We have storage available under the floor, and then we have accessories such as these hanging storage fabric panels for taking advantage of space that otherwise would be dead space, and now it's utilized for storage. If you come in a little closer, you'll see the other standard components of the system include the bed bunk upstairs, and right now it's fully extended. And even though the bed bunk is fully extended, you have room to stand up inside the Jeep. So you don't have to move anything around to get in the bunk, out of the bunk. If you get up in the morning, when to change your clothes, you don't have to go outside to do it. You can stand up uh, or sit down inside the Jeep, change your clothes, cook your breakfast, do your other things to get ready. Also, in the morning when you get up, you can slide the bed bunk forward and you have even more standing and work area back here from the back of the Jeep all the way to the roll bar. In addition to the open concept interior, we also have what, the, what we call the Camper One interior, which consists of two storage benches and a removable table. This storage bench uh, is made out of fiberglass. It will hold the table, the pole, its tripod, and a lot of other gear. It's bolted to the floor, keeps everything in place as you're going down the road, but you can remove it if you want to do a different type of a trip. This storage bench over here accommodates our shower and water system. And if you will look up here, underneath the bed bunk, in the morning when you get up and you slide the bed bunk forward, it will expose a wash and cook platform with an integrated sink that you might can see right down below here. There's room enough for a one or two burner propane stove and other things. So you can get up in the morning and if it's inclement weather, you can stay inside, you can make your coffee, you can cook your breakfast, you can clean up your dishes, you can wash yourself. There's room for a portable toilet inside, then get changed, get ready for the day. So really anything you want to do or need to do inside, you can do inside the JXL. So it's really a camper, a fully functional camper, but on a Jeep so you can get anywhere and get remote. Here we are with our final interior option uh, that we call Camper 2. In this system, we remove the 60 of the back seat and retain the third seat of the Jeep. We extend a longer flooring, and then we have two rows of dive on cabinetry that extend all the way from the back up to the passenger seat on the second row, then on the right side, all the way to the passenger seat in the front row. And this is really good for people that are gonna be on the road for some time because they can keep all their clothing and their gear up and out of their living area, stored away nice and securely. Again, it comes with uh, a removable table. So this can come out and sit outside on a tripod if you're interested in uh, eating outside when there's some pretty weather, getting on your laptop, getting a little work uh, done, those kind of things. So this system is great for people that might have three in the family 
or maybe it's a couple with their first child or a dog and they're gonna be uh, on the road, as I said, for an extended period of time. Like the Camper 2 that we just saw, there's plenty of room for three people in here to sit inside and eat their meals, uh, get some work done, in addition to the four that you see in the Camper 2. Now, uh, the inventory that we have uh, available today includes fitments for JKU Jeeps in addition to the new JL Jeep. So we have five vehicles out here today, each with different builds. We have four JKs and we have our new prototype JL. As I mentioned before, we have inventory for JKUs and now JLUs and this is our prototype for the new JL Jeep and we're producing these now in the Salt Lake City area where our American manufacturing is occurring. And if you're interested in getting a system, you can get one of three ways. You can either purchase a turnkey built vehicle from us that has the system installed and suspension, wheels, bumpers, other external accessories that you're interested in. We have vehicles available for sale right now. You can send us your Jeep and we can do the installation at our shop or we can send the system to you and a local shop can do the installation. In terms of exterior accessories, let's start with bumpers. Here we have for the JK inventory, a fiberglass bumper that's attached to the extension tub and accommodates a step-in ladder. But for those of you who wanna really get off-road and get in some rough country, we have the option for a steel expedition bumper that we see right here. This bumper attaches to the frame of the Jeep via steel frame extensions. And it has some nice features such as integrated external storage for smaller items, receptacles for lights, of course mounts for your D-rings for recovery. Again, it accommodates the entrance ladder. You can get these with a swing out tire carrier or without a swing out tire carrier. In addition to that, we have two different types of roofs available. We have the low profile roof that you can see on these vehicles and on this photograph here. That's very slim and trim. It's only 3.7 inches, really good on aerodynamics. You don't get the wind noise that you would get, say, with a Jeep roof rack and a rooftop tent. Uh, great on the economy on the vehicle. In addition to that, if you step back here and see up on this vehicle, we have our new Expedition roof. It's a two-tiered system that allows for an improved sleeping experience with a thicker mattress, ability to leave bedding inside, and additional headroom. If you can see on here, the first tier can accommodate cargo on the roof. We have a cargo rack built in that's hinged for easy access. And then the second tier is large enough for a couple of solar panels. While we're looking at this area, notice the metal work here. We have fabricated a ring rack to go around the top of your Jeep to help you accommodate the other standard accessories that you typically have in the overland environment, such as an awning, mounting of tools, lights, and other things. So it's a great system, works together, and with this two-tiered roof, it gives a nice, sharp uh, look to your overlanding vehicle. If you're interested in learning more about an American Safari JXL and how it might be right for you, Feel free to contact me, Glenn Pratt, G-L-E-N-P-R-A-T-T, -T, at Red River Rigs in Amarillo, Texas. You can see us online at americansafarijxl.com. You can give us a call at 1-833-810-1043 or an email at gp at redriverrigs.com. Appreciate your time today and get out there and get some adventuring done. Hi, I'm Craig Fisher. Um, I'm representing uh, Hatchet Overland, and this is the uh, debut of our um, pop-up camper for a JL uh, Jeep product. We're here at Outside Adventure Expo to uh, launch it and get feedback from the world on what we've done and, and uh, the uniqueness of the product, and I'm here to explain a little bit. So, as you can see, it's a fully integrated product into the Jeep JL model. It's full composite, made in hand-laid in Colorado. Tent fabric is a very breathable fabric and the whole thing can be set up in less than a minute and takes about a minute and a half to break it down. What's unique about the product is you actually enter the tent from inside the Jeep. We've been able to uh, put an egress in, in, uh, into the Jeep so that we don't have to climb up and down a ladder to get into the product. When we raise the top, 
It also slides 22 inches forward, and so it gives you some additional space inside besides just the bed that you get in a typical rooftop tent. You can also have full standing room. We've had uh, a number of uh, participants in the show come in, six foot four, six foot five, and they still have ample headroom. The idea behind that was one of the challenges that we have is when you're out on the, in, the, in the mountains, you get wet, you rain, you want to change your clothes, or at night, before you go to bed, you don't want to sleep in your gear. So now you can stand up inside your tent, on top of the roof, and, uh, and change clothing. My business partner and I have been overlanding for better than 20 years on each of us, and we've owned a lot of the products that are available on the market today as a, as a quality product for a traditional rooftop tent or a trailer. And what we found was that we wanted the convenience of having the space of a larger enclosure, but the advantage of, a, of, of staying up on top of the vehicle so that we can, you know, in the mountains of Colorado or the deserts of Utah, that we have the ability to, you know, catch the breezes at night, you know, stay away from the wildlife, all the advantages that you get in a traditional rooftop tent, um, but in a pop-up camper that's fully integrated and looks great on a Jeep. All the products that we've sourced are Colorado-based, and uh, the manufacturing of the composite uh, for the roof and for the bed platform is all done in Colorado. It's been custom fabricated so it fits into the roof, or the rain gutters of the Jeep, so we've eliminated noise um, from wind noise that you traditionally get in a rooftop tent, as well as provided some additional insulation. So we found that inside the Jeep in the summertime, the air conditioning doesn't have to work as hard because we've now given you an insulated layer on the roof. The other thing, because of the way we've designed the top and it slightly arcs, uh, we found that fuel economy for the Jeep has also been maintained. Uh, a lot of times when you've uh, put a, a rooftop tent on a vehicle, um, we've seen significant decreases in mileage and increases in wind noise. We don't experience any of that with this, with this product. The other advantage is we've integrated things into the top of it, which you can't really see from this vantage point, but we've, we've put storage spaces for max tracks or, the, or tracks so that you know, you're not having to bolt them on to a side and create additional wind noise. We've also got spots for integrated solar, so we have a 100 amps or 100 watt panel on this particular vehicle. You can put up to three of these, so you could up, add up to 300 watts. A little overkill for a Jeep JL, but, um, but if you have a lot of power, uh, our partners at Red Act can uh, help design a system to meet your power needs. We've had a lot of really great positive feedback at the show. Um, people have enjoyed the extra space. They've enjoyed the, the, the easy ventilation on this warm day here in Salt Lake City. And uh, thank you very much for your time. So if you're interested, uh, Craig Fisher at Hatchet Overland. And so you can just email me at craig at hatchetoverland.com or go to our website, www.hatchetoverland.com. Thank you very much.